It was 1981, and I, almost a virgin, was pouring, pouring pints in jeans so tight it made laughing dangerous. I'd just come from Melbourne, and I knew as much about working at a Scottish pub as Liz trusted about economics. I had no idea about alcohol. My mum didn't drink. Her idea of a piss-up was sherry in a trifle. I was 11 when my mum gave me the sex talk that scared the living orgasm out of me. I was so frightened of losing my virginity, I couldn't even use a tampon. It was the early 70s. Jermaine Greer was burning a bra, talking of vaginas, and my mum was scared I'd join her. Her sex advice was, don't do it until you're married. She had no idea the pill. She thought anal was something to do with constipation, a blowjob was something to do with tyres, a wank was dyslexic but frank, and orgasms were thing under a microscope. You ever wondered why cats' bottoms are different, she said. Like it was the most natural thing in the world to share a cat, stare at a cat's ass. Even at 11 I knew that not only was it weird to look at a cat's backside, but to call it a bottom? Mum began to explain the difference between male and female cats' bottoms, like she was explaining the theory of gravity. I couldn't even, sp- and I couldn't even spell the word. Men are like unneeded tomcats, she said, spraying their seeds everywhere, which made me look at Dad in a whole new way. You can get pregnant in the cinema, she said. Lose your virginity jumping off a bed. Then Dad started talking about town bikes and how we all wanted a new one for Christmas. Something no one else has ridden, he said. And I didn't even have a bike. I had a hand-painted scooter Dad rescued from the dump with no brakes. Stopping that bastard required the shoes of a steel. I did have a few teenage fumbles in the cinema. <clears throat> I'd snog through the man with the golden gun. Had a sandy fling on the beach that lived up to a myth that dark men had big penises. It was so big it had me running to the hotel, drowning the sight with a lukewarm Diet Pepsi. The chances of that tree trunk cut fitting into my insides was as possible as parking a lorry into a Wendy house. You could hang a week's washing on it. I finally met a young man in a local supermarket where I worked after school. He was a master of self-packing and with a manageable sized penis and very few words. And he had a car. He tried to flower me in more ways than you could skin a cat. Your cream egg and my flake are made for each other, he said. We did spend a lot of time in the chocolate aisle of the supermarket. His metaphors were as bad as his fumbling. Keeping my virginity was as easy as resisting a bag of lipstick all sorts. I hate the friggin' stuff. I dreamed of a life where I didn't have to come home to my mum and dad friggin' talking about bike of a man that knew what he was doing, and I thought I'd find it in Scotland.